Hello, I am Professor N. K. Pandey, Department of Physics, University of Lucknow. And uh, in today's lecture, we are going to cover the excimer lasers. Now, we have two types of uh, molecules we can consider. One is a dimer in which two similar molecules or two similar atoms, they make association like M and M to form M2. Now, if an, a laser is made out of this kind of molecule, M2, of the similar atom or similar mo molecules, then we call that the excimer laser. Basically, it is excited dimer. It is excited dimer. Uh, a dimer refers to association of two like molecules or atoms. But if we have the association of two molecules or two atoms which are not similar but which are dissimilar, then we have a laser that we call the exiplex, that is exi excited complex, that is M and N come together to form MN or in excited state it is MN star. Now let us consider a potential energy curve to understand the laser. Let us go for the, for, uh, to the ener potential energy curve here. Here we can see that if M and N, two dissimilar molecule or atoms have come together to make a pseudo molecule in the excited state, for example, MN star, then the potential energy of this MN will be like this. That in the excited, this is excited state curve and this is the ground state curve. In the excited state, they make a pseudo molecule because of the associative state, they come together. And here in the ground state, they do not come together. They are, they are highly repulsive to each other. So they come in the dissociative state. And one more thing, in the excited state, we can see that there is a minimum in the potential energy. Therefore, this MN star has, can stay here in this potential energy for some time. And therefore, it, the, there is a chance of making a population inversion in MN star. Now, the upper state is bound for a sufficiently long time so that the population inversion can be built up easily, whereas the repulsive or dissociative lower state will have near zero population because of its very short life, lifetime. Now, we have seen a schematic energy level diagram for an excimer laser illustrating an optical transition from associative upper ground bound state, MN star, to a repulsive lower state, M plus M. Now, mind it, Although we have M plus M is equal to M2, M plus N is equal to MN, that is the first is the excited dimer and the second is the excited complex. So, but together they are both known as only excited lasers only. That is, they are known as excited excimers only, excited lasers. In commercially, we do not use the term exiplex for either of the two. Now, if M here you can see from the excited state MN star that dissociates in the low in the ground state to M plus N and a photon. This photon is the very is this very photon is the laser that we have. Now this means that the curve of potential energy for the excited state touches a minimum, suggesting the molecule MN can exist in the excited state as pseudo molecule. The transition can have a broad emission line width as no well-defined vibration state level exists. You can see that the, this even the minimum is not a sharp one, that a sharp wavelength will be obtained. It has a broad emission line width. Now, let us go from the basic understanding of a dimer or an exiplex or an excited complex to now a case of the rare gases. Now, what are rare gases? These rare gases are characterized by highly low level of reactivity in their ground state. But in an excited state, they behave chemically as though they were in the alkali metal group as they have one electron in the outermost shell. In an, in an excited neon, this will become Na star and it will act as Na in the chemical reaction. Ar star will act as potassium. Krypton will act as rubidium in the excited state. Similarly, xenon in the excited state will behave like cesium. Now, therefore, 
because they have an outer electron now in the excited state. Therefore, their reactions with the halogen will be very vigorous, resulting in the formation of short-lived pseudo compounds that are ionically bonded when in the excited state. Now, let us take the example of an argon fluoride. Now, here, what do, what do we have? This laser of argon fluoride uses fluorine, argon, and helium, or in place of helium, neon mixture. And in this one, the following reactions take place. That is, an electron makes a ionization collision with the argon, ionizes the argon, and we have two electrons. That is, the, an electron has been taken out of the argon. Now, this electron makes collision with the argon, but does not remove an electron. Rather, it transfers its energy to argon. The argon becomes excited, and we have the same electron left over. This electron makes collision with the fluor fluorine to give us a fluorine negative. This is dissociative attachment. Now, out of these reactions, the excimers may be formed from these species by two main routes. One is the neutral route, in which excited argon reacts with the fluorine as you can see from here, to give excited argon fluoride plus one fluorine. Through the iron route, we have argon plus reacting with fluorine. And this A, A, which is nothing but helium or neon in the mixture, that gives the argon fluoride excited compound. And we have the same. This is A leftover. Here, the third body A, that is helium or neon, is the high pressure buffer gas component in the mixture. What is the role of A? It helps balance energy and momentum in the reaction. The buffer gas also helps increase the heat capacity of the system so that the discharge induced temperature rise is constrained. That is, it increases the heat capacity so that whatever the heat comes up because of the, because of the reaction, that does not increase the temperature of the system. Now, if we have a volume of excimer as a amplifying medium, then lasing may take place through transition between upper associative step and the lower, lower dissociative step. After undergoing laser transition, the molecules reach the repelling ground state, they dissociate quickly. Now, population inversion of argon fluoride is created between the bound upper state and the repulsive ground state, which are connected connected by a strong ultraviolet radiation, radiative transition centered at around 193 nanometer. On emission of a photon, as per the, this reaction, argon fluoride in the excited state giving way to argon fluorine in the dissociative state and this photon. The binding excitation is lost after this reaction. Argon fluoride is also cooled to the ground state by collision as per the following reaction here. Argon fluoride makes collision with helium or neon, whichever is present, and dissociates into argon, fluorine, and this helium and neon left over. This, together with radiative loss, reduces the upper state lifetime to a few nanoseconds. Now, these are certain examples of uh, the excimer lasers argon 2 at 126 nanometer, krypton 2, 146, fluorine 153, argon fluoride 193. This, uh, we have krypton chloride 222, krypton fluoride 248, xenon chloride 308 nanometer, and xenon fluoride uh, at 353 nanometer. There are other examples of uh, excimer lasers as well. Now, as per the construction of the excimer laser, an excimer laser generally has a gain medium of around half to one meter. Now, here, the halogen species that are present there, they have a tendency to disintegrate and form other unwanted compounds during the laser operation. Hence, the arrangement for recirculation of the gas is made for supply of pure constituents of the gases in the amplifying medium. A halogen, these halogens are corrosive in nature. So hence, the entire structure and components are made up of stainless steel with corrosion resistant material. The discharge takes place in the transverse direction. The electrodes are metal pieces that are flat and long in size. The metal pieces are rounded for uniformity of electric field. 
when the voltage is applied. Thus, arc discharge is avoided, rather uniform discharge is created. The initial electron seeding is achieved through pre-ionization pulse produced by an array of tiny ultraviolet spark charges called flash bolts. These sparks produce sufficient ultraviolet radiation to produce ionization in the gain region, which substantially increases the electrical conductivity of the gain medium. A high voltage capacitor, as you can see, a high voltage capacitor coupled with a thyretron thyre switching, we have a thyretron switching, device produces the discharge current. A mirror, you can see here, a mirror with high reflectivity is placed at the rear of the arrangement. A flat quartz, we have a flat quartz is placed at the output coupling. It is output coupling. At this point, a flat quartz is placed at the output coupling mirror. The low reflectivity of the quartz is adequate to give the required optical feedback. Figure two shows this schematic diagram of a commercial excited laser, as you can see from here. Now let us consider the applications, medical uses of applications. The ultraviolet light from an excimer laser is well absorbed by biological matter and organic compounds. The excimer laser adds sufficient energy to disrupt the molecular bonds of the surface tissue without burning them. This allows tissues to disintegrate into the air in a controlled operation. This we call the ablation. If you have any problem, for example, on the skin, when the laser light falls on that, it absorbs that energy, uh, being the organic or biological compound, and the skin, the the uh, uh, the wrong skin that you need to remove that skin is ablated that breaks into chips and is easily removed but this does not burn the area around this does not heat the area around. thus excimer lasers can remove very fine layers of surface material with almost no heating or change to the remainder of the material this property makes excimer lasers well suited to precision micro machining organic material or delicate surgeries such as eye surgery, LASIK. Now, these lasers are used in photolithography. Excimer lasers are widely used in high resolution photolithography machines for microelectronic chip manufacturing. Current state of the art lithography tools use deep ultraviolet DUV light from krypton fluoride or argon fluoride excimer lasers with wavelengths of 248 nanometer and 193 nanometers, excimer laser lithography has played a crucial role, critical role in the continued advance of the so-called Moore's law. Now, in the scientific research, excimer lasers are used in many fields of scientific research, both as primary sources as well as as pump sources for tunable dye lasers, mainly to excite laser dyes emitting in the blue-green region of the spectrum. Now, these lasers face a lot of challenges as well. Excimer lasers are facing strong competition, st especially from solid state lasers. Although they still offer the most efficient access to ultraviolet spectral region with high energies and high peak and average powers in pulsed operation. However, they have some drawbacks such as poor beam quality, that is high mode structure and high divergence, their size, operating costs, and maintenance requirements. These are the challenges faced by the excimer lasers. So thank you very much for your kind attention.